Page 170, 3.3, volume and capacity of prisms and cylinders. In general, guys, volume is always easier than surface area. Okay? What is volume? Total space, just like area, except area is for 2D objects and volume is for 3D shapes. Okay? So it's like how much li liquid can fit how much air can fit in a container. Does this make sense to people? All right. Volume is measured in cubed units. So when you go to write your units, make sure you put a little three, okay? Everybody okay on that? All right. Volume and capacity are closely related. Capacity is the amount a three-dimensional object can hold. Volume is the measure of the space a three-dimensional object occupies. In my opinion, those things are the same. Usually we use the word capacity when we're talking about how much liquid a container can hold. Okay? Right here, it's on your formula sheet as well on the back. Here, guys, you see this? thousand centimeters cubed you guys ever see a centimeter cube before I, can't, I think in elementary school you might see these things like tiny little cube like let's see if I can draw a tiny little cube you guys ever see these tiny little cubes like this in elementary school it could fit in your, it's like tiny, it's like fit on your pinky, a centimeter cube. Okay? A centimeter cube. Question? Stepping on that, like stepping on Lego. Stepping on Lego, yeah. Okay, this little centimeter cube, Mustafa, please don't talk while I'm talking. The centimeter cube is equal to, in metric system, the one centimeter cube is equal to the one milliliter. All right? A thousand of these little tiny cubes is going to be your <coughs> liter. Okay? So you go to the grocery store and you go pick out some milk, right? You got the skinny carton. The skinny carton, right? Carton. How much in the skinny carton? No. Nope. The liter. Then the fat carton. How much is in that one? Two, Two liter. And then the jug. That's the four liter. How much is the one? one. What about the little That's like five, five hundred, half. What about the little, little one? It's like two fifty. Okay, enough. Okay, <laughs> so in America, you know the big jug that's like the milk? The four liter? That's pretty much a gallon. So in America they use the gallon. So it's like th it's like three point eight liters or something. So basically Think about that for capacity. Skinny milk, one liter. The double that up, the fat carton, two liter. And then the jug that you can carry, four liter. Okay? And then everybody's got, like, you know, your cans. What's a can like? 355 or something? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and in, in Canada, we use milliliter. And oddly enough, in Europe, they use centiliter. Centiliter. So like you go get like a bottle of your favorite beverage, it'd be like 35 centiliters. Well, it's like, it'd be 350 milliliter. It's, it's like one less zero. Centiliter, yeah. Centiliter. That's just Europe. They're more metric, I don't know. Okay, so. Volumes of prisms and cylinders, guys, it's always going to be this formula. Area of the base times the height. Okay? So, you guys ever see those money rolls? Oh, yeah. Like for coins, though. Oh, yeah. So, like, say you put, like, a dime like that right there. Listen, imagine that's, like, a circle, right? That's your base. Now, what happens if you keep stacking dimes up? And they're all, the <laughs> they should all be the same. What do you get? a tower of dimes that you could roll up that is your cylinder okay so it's the area of the base and then times the height
Okay, that's a terrible picture, but you get the idea. So you draw, you draw a dime, there's the base, so you figure out the area of that base, and then you multiply by the height, and guess what? You get this 3D space. Mustafa, you have to face forward, okay? All right. So you guys know this. What's the most common volume formula for the box? L, W, H. Length times width times height. You guys all know that, guaranteed. What is length times width equal to? Area of a rectangle times the height. Okay. The other formula is for the cylinder. Look at your back of your page. It's pi r square h. <coughs> pi r square is the area of the circle times the height. Okay? I just draw my L's like that or else they look like ones. So in the back of your sheet you have all different shapes and V is what you're looking for. Okay? For volume. All right. Okay, build your skills number one. Find the volume and capacity of the following prisms. What's going on off my screen? Why isn't it loading? You guys, you guys hogging up the Wi-Fi or what? Come on, computer. Can you guys go into airplane mode or something? <laughs> oh, there it goes. <laughs> okay. So this is asking us to find the volume of prisms, rectangular prisms. So in all cases, it's going to be LWH. So go ahead and just times these. LWH. You can flip the page into build your skills, guys. Okay, Ty, Jaden, and Mustafa. No more talking or I'm going to have to ask you guys to leave. So we have 15.7 times 18.8 times 12.5, 3,689.5 square centimeter. Then you take a look at the back of your yellow sheet. Take a look at the back of your yellow sheet. Look at the conversions for capacity. I put that in there nice for you. One milliliter is exactly one cubic centimeter. Mr. Matt, what is that? Calculator? Okay. So it's a one-to-one -one relationship. So this is identical to the milliliters. Everyone, don't get that mixed up. It's so obvious, okay? It's identical. The number of cubic centimeters is how many milliliters you have. How do you translate that to liters, guys? If you have 3,000, you just move the decimal how many places? Three. So 3.6895, basically 3.7 liters. OK? So to go from milliliter to liter, just divide by 1,000. You know what? Why don't you just write that on your page right there? Write that on your yellow sheet. Milliliter to liter, divide by 1,000. That way there's no confusion about this stuff. And I'll, I'll show you how I would write that. Milliliter to liter, divide by 1,000. And then I'll change color. And if you go from liter to milliliter, times by a thousand. Okay? There you go, sir. So m you're more than welcome to jot this down onto your yellow sheet to help you with conversions for capacity. Okay? On my standardized test, it's going to be like calculate the volume in centimeter cube and then all the answers are going to be in like milliliters or liters. Okay? So you're going to have to figure that out. Maybe, maybe one or two questions like that. Okay, next one is uh, also a rectangular prism, but the base is a square. Mustafa, focus this way. Don't throw Marlon under the bus. He's a good man. Okay, how do you calculate the area of a square? 
because you're going to need that area of a base times the height. So 2.75 times 2.75 times 4.5. It's basically the exact same formula, length times width times height, but in this case, the length and the width are the same, so it's side squared, but whatever. You can just go LWH and you'll get it, no problem. What is this? 2.75 times 2.75 times 4.5. Looks like 34. And let's just round it right there. 34 cubic meters. That's a ton of capacity. This is like maybe a swimming pool or something. Okay? This is massive. All right. Here's a conversion here for a meter cube. Meter cube, imagine that. This is insane. A meter cube. Okay? Imagine a cube that was this long, this high, and this deep. Okay? It's a lot of water. Okay. So what does the formula sheet say? A, a thousand liters for every one meter cube. You have 34 meter cube. So x liters cross multiply. You just have to times. So it looks like a 34,000 liters. Okay, that's a ton of liquid or air, whatever it is. Okay, so for every meter cube, you have a thousand liters. Okay, keep going here. Okay, so this shape is still LWH, 1.5 times 3.75 times 2.25. I don't really mess around with fractions, okay? These ones are easy because they're quarters and halves. But say it wasn't easy, okay? So let me just put, put a little note down here. Okay, so like fraction help. Like some of you have fraction buttons on your calculator, you can just use those. So for example, say it was 7 and like 3 sixteenths. How do you get the decimal for that every time without ever having to worry? Okay, just figure out what 3 divided by 16 is and then add the whole number to it. Okay, 3 divided 16, 0 0.1875 and then just add the whole number to it. So 7.1875. Okay. So if you ever get fractions on a test, just go to decimal every time. Okay, some of you have fraction buttons, you could use those, but I'm just giving you some help if you ever have a fraction problem. Okay, back to the problem we're working on. That was just a little aside. So take those numbers and times them all up. I got 12.65, let's just end it there. This is inch cube. Now I'm a little bit worried because I don't have a conversion for inch. Let's go back a page. Okay, we're going to have to do that question again. So these are all inches. And if you want the capacity in the metric system, you would have to switch all these into centimeters. Okay? So in one inch, there's 2.54 centimeters. So I have to take all these numbers and times them by 2.54. Okay, so 1.5 times 2.54, and just bear with me here, 3.81. 3.75 times 2.54, Jaden, 2.25 times 2.54, 5.715. Okay, so these are all in centimeters now. This one inch equals 2.54 centimeters is on your formula sheet. Okay, so for every one inch, two and a half centimeters. 
So I just times all these by two and a half centimeters. Now that they're all in centimeters, I can get the volume. I got 207.4 cubic centimeters, which is exactly 207.4 milliliters. So they we're talking about like this bottle here, less than this bottle. This bottle's 330. And if you imagine a rectangular prism that was like one and a half inches wide, three and a quarter inches uh, tall, or whatever, you're not going to fit a lot of water in there. All right. Do you guys still need that page? Okay. Here's an algebra question where they give you the volume and they want you to figure out one of the dimensions. So volume equals area of a base times height. They're asking you to solve for height. That's what they want you to figure out. So you must know the other two things. It says the volume is 142. And it says that you need area of a base. So you'd have to multiply these. Let's multiply that rectangle. Get the area of the rectangular base. I got 40.56. Okay, times H. How do you solve a question like this? With the algebra. So something times 40 is 142. So just do the opposite of that, like they teach in elementary school. Just divide out 40.56. And it looks like the height is 3.5. And that would be meters. Mustafa, are you bored? Well, then write stuff down. That way you can keep busy. Just in case these questions pop up on your test, right? You're prepared? Uh, all the tests are on the board here. looks like next Friday. Mm. All right, sounds good. I know you told me all you're going to be gone all week, except for maybe Monday. Okay, one rectangular prism has these dimensions. The second prism has a base that is that. What must the height be if they have to have the same volume? Okay, so let's take a look at this. Let's draw this out. 18 by 12. So something like this, 18 by 12, and by, 30, by 32. So it's going to be much larger. OK, there's 32. So there's the volume. The volume inside, you'd have to times those 12 by 18 by 32. How do I draw that? Do you want me to start over? You don't want me to start over? <laughs> okay, start over. Go too fast sometimes. Okay, so all you gotta do is draw a squished rectangle. Looks like a kind of like a almost like a diamond. Doesn't have to be perfect. That looks like a trapezoid. That's brutal. Okay, 18, 12. Are you talking to me? Okay, 18, 12, and 32. You just have to draw sort of a squished rectangle, and then you draw lines vertical, and then match it up on the bottom. So times those all together, length times width times height. You got the volume, the volume of the prism. 
You got uh, six thousand nine hundred and twelve, and that's cubic centimeter. Now you have the second prism that they want to have the same volume. So instead of it being eighteen by twelve, it's fourteen by twenty. So what must the height be? So if if it's wider at the base probably going to be shorter of a height, I think. So, in this case the height is the question mark. Whoop, the heck just happened. Whoa, do I have a new page or something? There it is. All right. So how do I figure out this missing piece? Okay, so we want the volume to be 69.12, right? So we want the volume to be 69.12. It's 14 times 20 times H. So figure out what 14 times 20 is, and then divide it out to the other side. So divide out 280. And I got 24.7 centimeter. So like we expected, it's a little bit shorter in terms of the height. You guys ever hear about these uh, Tim Hortons extra large compared to the Tim Hortons large? It's pretty much the same. I don't know why I do this. It's like an extra 20 cents every time. Because this one's skinnier, right? This one's got a skinnier cup, and the large is actually a bit wider, but shorter. So it's roughly still the same volume. So, what'd you say? All right, so moving along here. Not sure why this. Delete that page. All right, here, let's go look at number four. Go back? Well, only because you asked so nicely. All right, let's take a look at number four. Looks like they're going to do some excavation, basically dig a hole. Uh, and I think that would be a pretty cool job, drive one of those trucks, digging holes all day. Um, unless it was like plus 40 and you had to sit in there with no air conditioning, that would be brutal. Uh, but anyways, the hole must be dug. These are the dimensions of the hole they want. And it says, well, how many trips are going to be required if you can move this much cubic meters of dirt every time? So this actually happened to me last summer. My, uh, my girlfriend's lake, her cottage. Um, there's no, they built a cottage, there's no grass, so they wanted to put some grass down, they had to bring in like two truck worth of uh, dirt, okay? Then they just dumped all the dirt right in the middle of the backyard, and we had to shovel it with like wheelbarrows. It was brutal. I shoveled it, yeah. Two days. Who did, who did the most work? Yeah, my girlfriend worked hard, yeah. So, yeah. No, you guys. Anyways, why do I... Okay, you want to leave? Well, then, quit chirping. Okay. I think it's funny. Okay. Take this volume and multiply is going to be meter times meter times meter you're going to have cubic meter this is going to give you the total amount for the whole okay now what do you think you do when you have the total it's like 10,500 what are you going to do with this total 
Just like I had to take a wheelbarrow full every time, how many trips do you think I had to make? So basically we're putting it into groups. So divide it into groups of 15 meter cubes. Okay, so 10,005 divided by 15 meter trips. This is 700 trips. So this is similar to what I had to do over the summer. But like this 700 trips was made a lot easier when like the neighbor came over, brought his wheelbarrow. So it's like not one person having to do this and two people have two wheelbarrows. Okay, so you can break the work down. Now right. Now the next shape you guys should see sort of like familiar to the last section, 3.2. Remember when they're irregular shapes? What do we do? Yeah, we problem solved it. And in this case, you'd probably just draw a line like that. And then it'd be volume one and volume two, and you'd add them up. So it's the exact same kind of stuff. All right, that's exactly what they did. They took the to total volume by adding it up. Okay, notice they put it in centimeter cube and just a quick division by a thousand to get it into liter. Because these are, this is exactly milliliter divided by a thousand and you're into liter. So that's the kind of stuff we already talked about. Okay, so it says the volume of the figure in example three Okay, so I don't want to flip back and forth pages this. Okay, example three. What did example three look like? Oh, it's that irregular shape. It could have been calculated by dividing the composite prism into two different prisms than the ones used in the solution given. Draw a diagram to indicate this. All right, well, can we just look at it? How would we do it? I don't want to actually do it. How would we do it? Where would you draw the line? Like left, right? Like that? Th would this one do it as well, though? Yeah. yeah, so there's more. What they're trying to say is there's more than one solution, okay? That's all they're getting at. So, then it says the volume could have also been done with subtraction. Okay, so that one's a little bit different. How would you do this with subtraction? You would have to imagine that you calculated the full prism. And then you'd have to subtract this one out. So you'd have V total using length, width, and a total height. And then all you'd have to do, guys, do is subtract that one out. How would you get the total height? You'd have to take these two numbers and add them up, big guy. Right there and right there. That height and that height, you'd add them up. Yeah. All right. So all that example is, is trying to get across is that there's more than one way to solve irregular shapes. Okay, so if you do it one way and your buddy does it another way, still get the same answer. It's all good. So let's try one of these. Looks like a Tetris block here. Where would you guys draw the line? Like that? Yeah. Is that what's coming to your mind? How many of you want to draw like two lines and do three calculations? Uh, that way? Yeah. Horizontal? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so draw a line in there like that. Let's call this one volume one and volume two. Kareem, you okay, buddy? Yeah. All right. Khalif, I'm surprised you're not on your iPad right now. You're doing good, big guy. Okay, volume one. What are the dimensions of this volume one? 
Is 11 the height like this? Is that 11? Okay. And then what's the depth into the page? 12. And what's the only one that we're missing? The length. How are we going to get this length right here? It's like a problem solving. 30 minus 18 because of these two 9's? So 30 minus 9 minus 9 is 12. So this is 12. Okay, so volume 1, 12 times 12 times 11. Make your pencil move, Mustafa. Too much work. Hurting your head. Okay, you got 15... 84 cubic meters for the top shape. Now the bottom shape should be pretty easy. These are all on here. 12, 30 times 12 times 8. Twenty-eight eighty cubic meters. Add these two numbers up. 44, 64 for V tech. I mean V total. That's Jaden's favorite car. He's just kidding. It's my favorite car. What's a V tech? It's like a little uh, race car made by Honda. <laughs> I'm just kidding you guys. Okay. Would you draw the line like that? Would you guys draw the line like that? I would, that's how I would do it. I would just block it off into two bricks like that. So V1 and V2. Just like this, okay? Okay, so for the next one, they're going to have to solve for W because they've given us a capacity. So that's going to be a tough question. We'll give Mustafa a second to catch up here. And then let's try to think about what we're going to do for the next one. So go ahead, look at the next one, see what you're going to do. Okay. So this one, this one looks pretty tough. So this 1.8 liters is the capacity. Let's convert that into the centimeters, because you notice all these units are in centimeter. Okay, so how are we going to get that into centimeters? First of all, liters is going to get you to milliliters. How many milliliters? Did go look back on your sheet? What did I say? So you got to time. No, going to the smaller unit, you'd have to times. So eighteen hundred milliliters. Okay. 1800 milliliters. 1800 milliliters is exactly 1800 cubic centimeter. So the milliliter to the centimeter cube is the perfect translation. Now all you have to do is figure out V1 and V2 and add them up. I think. Okay. So V1 plus V2 is going to equal 1800 cubic centimeters. Do you guys agree with that? Do you, go, do you agree with this? Yeah. So what's the formula for V1? Let me get these marks out of the way. What's the formula for V1? L, W, H. For V1, what's the length? This one right here. What's that length? I have a portion of it. Yes, add. What two numbers do I add, Josh? There to there is 16.9. Is it 7.3 or 8.5? Yeah, 7.3. So there's the length. Okay. 
times the W, which we don't know, times the height. What's the height of V1? 9.4. Okay, so let's figure out 16.9 plus 7.3, it's 24.2. Okay, 24.2. Times that with 9.4, and what do you get? 227.48 W. Okay, so that's going to be the formula for V1. Let me switch color. Now let's work on V2. Okay, so what's the formula for V2? L, W, H. L, 8.5, times W, times, oh no, I screwed that up, didn't I? I did screw that up. Start that over. Okay, for V2, guys, let me start that over. For V2. What's this length right there? 7.3, good. No, I can't. 7.3 times W times the height, which is 8.5. Okay? So use a pointer. That length right there, 7.3. The W is W, and the height is 8.5 the height. So length, do you see it? 7.3 is right here. The width is W and the height is this 8.5. Yeah, little cube. We're going to figure that out right now, big guy. Okay, so 7.3 times 8.5 you get 62.05 W and this is all equal to 1800. Okay. So basically your two volumes, you don't know W in each. So you figure out the other terms, L and H, L and H, and times them. And you have these two things that both rely on W. So it's like one apple plus two apples is three apples. This is 227W plus 62W. You just add it up. It's just like adding in uh, algebra. So 289.53W is equal to 1800. Now we have to divide out the 289.53. So 6.2 centimeter. That's a tough question. <laughs> okay, so it's this shape on the bottom plus that shape on the top adds up for 1,800 centimeters, right? And I don't know W. Length times width times height? So, length times height times W, length times height times W, figure out the coefficients, add them up, divide it out. Okay, next one's volume of cylinders. 
This formula is on your formula sheet. Pi r squared h, just the area of the base, which is a circle, times the height. Here's the volume of a soup can, or a tomato sauce, whatever. You just take the radius squared times pi times the height, get the centimeter cube, and then they divide it by a thousand, so you get like half a liter there. Okay? So that's not too bad. That's not too bad at all. Like three more to go, and then you guys can have time to work on your homework. Okay, calculate the volume and capacity of a cylinder with diameter 15 and height 36. So I've seen some people doing some weird things on the quizzes. You only like adjust diameters. If they give you radius, just work with it. Okay, like you boys at the back, you guys are doing some weird things. I made marks on your quizzes, make sure you fix it. Okay, diameter, 15, what are you going to do with it? Divide by 2, so the radius is 7.5, okay? There's the radius. Here's your height, 36. So volume, pi r squared h, pi 7.5 squared h, Okay, I'm getting like 6361.7. This is cubic centimeter. The cubic centimeter is identical to the milliliter. Divide by 1000 and you get the liter. So roughly 6.4 liters. Okay, next one, some stacked cylinders like the wedding cake. We've seen this before. Um, each cylinder has a height of 20, okay? So each one of these has height 20. So this one, basically V1, V2, V3, and add them all up, okay? For V total, V1 plus V2 plus V3. All right, so pi r squared. So the first one will have a radius of 5. Second one will have a radius of 10. And the third one will have a radius of 20. Yeah, so each one of these radius guys, you just take these diameters and cut in half. So the radius there is 5, radius there is 10, radius there is 20. So radius squared times 20. Pi radius squared times 20. This you could literally type into your calculator the whole way. And that's what I'm going to do. Pi 5 squared 20 plus pi 10 squared 20 plus pi 20 squared 20 32,986.7 cubic centimeter That's exactly the same amount of milliliters. Divide by a thousand, and you'll get the liter, 32.9 liters. So three decimal moves. 
It's roughly 33 liters. It's asking for capacity. It just looks like a wedding cake. Question. What? Oh, I screwed up to six and the eight. It's all good. It's the end of the day on a Friday. And I feel like I have to sneeze. I just don't want to sneeze into this microphone. Okay, one more to go and then you'll be free. So a large tin can. There's your large tin can. Has capacity 3.24 liters. Okay, so 3.24 liters. How do you get to milliliter? Times by a thousand. So 3,240 milliliter. That's exactly how much cubic centimeters you'll have. Now it's asking what is the height. So the volume, 3,240 cubic centimeters, is equal to pi r squared h. I just need somebody to divide 15.56 for me. And we're going to solve for h. That's what we're going to solve for. What was it? 7.78. Thank you. Okay, so for this style of question, you're going to need to simplify this coefficient, 7.78 squared times pi. I have like 190.1555 dot 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 times h. Okay, so you're trying to solve for h, so you need to divide that 190 on both sides. This 190.1555 dot 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 on both sides. A rat. Seventeen. So seventeen centimeters is the height of the can. Okay, so your homework would be question one, two, three, four, five, six of three point three. Okay? Volume is typically easier than surface area. I will give you time to work on the homework on Monday. I'll give you the quiz for three point three Monday. It'll probably take us a couple days to do 3.4. So then looking like practice test Thursday, actual test Friday. Sound good? And then we'll be done with uh, surface area volume. This is going to be spring break. You can come back after spring break, do some trig. Trig. Trig's easy if you get it, yep. If you Pardon me? What's trick? All right, so you guys got about 15 minutes.